Hi, and welcome to my session about event-driven Rails new application. Uh, my name is Andrzej Krzywda, I'm from RKNC. This session is about uh, kind of a discussion and debating of the situation, what would happen if we start a typical Rails application from scratch, so Rails new, generate the app, but then go with events from the beginning. That's not the usual thing to do. Um, today's webinar is not about, this is not in the agenda, this is not about microservices. Uh, many people think events and immediately think this is asynchronous, this is microservices. This doesn't have to be this way. Events are about decoupling, but it doesn't have to be uh, asynchronous decoupling. So it doesn't have to be like the, we split their uh, infrastructure architecture into several moving parts. It can be within one service, within one microservice, and everything's still great. This uh, talk is also not about message buses because there are lots of them and you can choose whichever you like, but mostly you choose them for the situations where you go uh, microservices and this is not about microservices. You can gain a lot from being even driven without thinking about microservices, without thinking about asynchronous. Uh, a talk about or a session about microservices is something that I'm planning for the future. This is just not for today. Also, this session is not about making an event-driven block application in 15 minutes, although that's something I have in mind and I would like to uh, challenge myself to do it one day. Uh, and I think sometime soon I will be able to create this block application similar as DHH did uh, with the first Rails release. And also I should be able to do it in 15 minutes, it's just this session is not about it, maybe in the future, so stay tuned, maybe consider subscribing to, the, to this channel. Uh, this session is about several things. Uh, I will start with, with a short explanation how and why RKNC went events with Rails. Um, I will show you some code, simple Rails application with events, and I will show you the amount of boilerplate, because there's quite a lot of boilerplate needed and required, and that's kind of an investment. And I will show you some events, comments, read models, aggregates, and I think the good part here is I will show you how it is to test unit event-driven units, uh, I think it's really cool, like how they can be encapsulated and how they can be tested with events. I think that's one of the biggest benefits. So if in biggest, bigger race applications we have some problems with long builds and slow and undeterministic stuff, this event-driven approach can help a little bit. And at the end, I will try to answer, uh, to answer the, the main question for today. Is it worth going events from the beginning? So that's, uh, that's something I'm going to... Uh, try to find some heuristic and try to find ways of you know answering this question. Uh, about me, I'm uh, the CEO of RKNC, we are a Ruby agency, we started uh, existing in 2007, but I was doing Rails from 2004, like almost immediately from the beginning, I fell in love. I was a Java developer back then, Java, the Java, Java language was the rebel thing to do back then, uh, but when I saw Ruby and I saw the simplicity of the Ruby code and you know the, the niceness of the Ruby code, and I also saw how great is Rails at the beginning. I kind of hoped that this is the new world and I'm really happy that I made the jump from Java to, to Ruby with a very short Python break too. I was even infected since 2013, so it's not like I knew about events for, for forever. Uh, it's something I learned. Um, and my last year of commercial work was in a project which is fully even sourced even driven and it's also about microservices and I know many people are excited about microservices while others are really skeptical uh, this is also a topic which I'm changing my opinion about but that's again something for maybe another session let me know in the comments whether that would be interesting for you I'm also a vlogger since last month so if you're watching this in the October uh, 2017 then I just started vlogging I'm not sure if in the future I will still keep doing this but I'm uh, also blogging since uh, almost for um, the last 10 years or more, and I'm quite happy with the blogging format. I also help with this nice conference called Wrocław RB, which is in Wrocław. It's about Ruby. It's not really about the Rails way. It's more about showing the other alternative ways. We invite speakers from Hanami. We invite speakers from Trailblazer. So we try to show on from ROM. We try to show the other alternatives too. So if you consider uh, coming to Wrocław, uh, this is usually in March every year. Uh, Wrocławrb.com should show you the details. All right, so how RKNC went Rails? This was basically me starting uh, Rails freelancing in 2007. Uh, I think I started the first commercial projects in Rails. Before that, I was using mostly Rails for side projects. Uh, and that was the time when Rails was kind of like a synonym for you do startups with Rails. 
especially in the US, in the West Europe, uh, that was the choice. Somehow it was very investment friendly. Many VCs recommended their startups to go rails. So companies like Arkansas, or at the beginning it was me just as freelancer, uh, I, once people not knew about me, I got quite a lot of projects. And at the beginning it was mostly about you know creating projects from scratch, so the first version of the startups. But as we know, most of the startups fail. Uh, so that's also the case, even Rails doesn't help that much, uh, but some of the startups r survive. And this is how we went events, because at some point, that was probably in 2009, 2010, we switched from taking just the startups uh, to implement, we switched to, and we see this kind of niche in the market to work on existing Rails applications. And uh, you know the, the, the big ones, the ones that survived, the not longer, the not, not startups anymore. So we tried to help them, they're bringing money, and we also learned how to, that legacy projects are cool, actually. It's really nice not to be the cost of the system, but actually an investment. We are making the project to make more money, and the business model is actually working here. So this is the cool part. But also the technical things, it was really uh, quite, I would say, liberating to understand that, you know, as the Rails community, in a way, we are very unified and many people say this is a bad thing but there are some good things about it and the good things about the unified rails world is that uh, all of the bigger rails applications are broken in very similar ways uh, so they have very similar problems they overuse the similar uh, rails techniques or the railsway techniques and uh, this means it's also uh, easier to fix them uh, because we have like okay we have identified like 50 problems and then we can see which techniques works and events was one of the topic of research on my, on my side but uh, before events I researched aspect oriented programming whether it can help with Ruby uh, the tooling wasn't really there and people are not really used to think in terms of aspects so I gave up then I inter was interested in portion adapters hexagonal architecture the data context interaction and I took many little things from that and as a team we learned quite a lot from that uh, but at some point we learned about events and domain-driven design and CQRS and event sourcing. But just to be clear, at the beginning I had no idea why it makes sense to even source a system. I got it totally wrong. Uh, I had no idea why it makes sense to uh, to go CQRS, so separate reads and writes, like what's the point? Uh, it took me quite a long time uh, to understand this. And it was mostly thanks to Mirek Pragowski, who is now at Arkansas who was patiently explaining all, all of that to me and at some point I, I one evening it was just it clicked we said we were sitting over a beer with Mirek and it was like bam I understand now and suddenly I knew that this is useful for race applications that we can those we can use those techniques in race applications in short race is about coupling and events are about decoupling but don't treat it as I'm saying something negative about, about race I really love race it's just the Rails is almost by definition about coupling. Rails was from from the beginning uh, mm, marketed as uh, Rails is a tool for database backed web applications. So database and web in one sentence, and kind of shows in the in the in most of the Rails applications that you know Active Record is the result of being database and web at the same time, uh, which is cool because it lets us start very quickly. Like I still don't know any other environment which it helps us start so quickly as in Rails but it doesn't reduce the coupling. Events are about decoupling, and also doesn't mean that decoupling is by definition good or bad, it just makes sense sometimes to, to, to separate certain parts. And I really like how events are helping us separate mostly the modules of the system which represent the business areas. Uh, this is probably the best part about for me. So suddenly we can just talk about invoicing without thinking about ordering, or we can talk about uh, inventory without thinking about payments, for example. And the, the typical pain of the race applications is that at some point mm, one or two of your bigger classes are reaching the points that they have 50 columns. And usually someone can come from the outside and they can say, well, how did this happen? Who added 50 columns to, the, to this, uh, this table, to this active record? And obviously the answer is it happened one, on a one, one uh, at a time, which means, you know, that was uh, something that people were doing because that was needed for the features. And that, was, that seems to be the simplest um, solution to the current problem. So one by one we get 50 columns. I even heard about user.columns being 72, so uh, probably there are some better records here. Uh, Greg Young is the person who uh, invented CQRS, so the reads and writes uh, separation, which was based on CQS and that existed for a long time before. 
Uh, he's also a big promoter of event sourcing, uh, and he's a really you know good person to follow and read and watch his presentation. And last year he he said something that really ring a bell for us as race developer, I think, because he said when you start modeling events, it forces you to think about the behavior of the system as opposed to thinking about the structure of the system. And I think that's really the point about Rails. The second sentence is a lot about Rails, for, as I know, the Rails community and Rails projects, that we often think, and me included, we often think about uh, every new feature as something like, okay, where should I add new attributes? Like immediately, pro product has price. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's also called crowd way of thinking, so create, read, update, destroy. So we think in terms of resources, and Rails was quite proud at some point to uh, mm, to think about everything as resources, and I think we went a little bit too far sometimes. Uh, when we talk about events, this is my this is actually where exactly where I'm recording this. This is the wall is over there, uh, and the doors are, are there. We had an event storming session with the RKNC team, and we were event storming an application that we that we are consider writing. And then applica this application is for managing and to helping us organizing workshops for programmers. So we organize workshops where we teach people how to be event driven with Rails, uh, how to do domain driven design with Rails, how to do event sourcing with Rails. And the whole business process behind organizing the workshop is actually quite complicated. It's not super easy. And so far we did it mm, without any kind of you know, custom software support. Uh, we only use um, e-commerce uh, engine from DPD. Obviously, we use some kind of Google Docs. We actually use Quip for documenting the checklists. But overall, there's like nothing automated, really. Not that much is automated. And we thought it's a good moment to automate it. So that was the one reason that we considered writing this software. We want to automate the uh, our... We, should, we want to help ourselves. The second reason is that we want this application to be available for the people who attend our workshops uh, or maybe who buy our books. Uh, so they can see something real. The problem with most of the applications um, that exist out there to show, you know, even sourcing and even driven, and there's really not that much um, uh, out there actually about this, is that they are mostly side projects or they're, they're not really working. And we actually want to have this, uh, this version deployed and used by us. So the yellow cards are about events. The, the whole technique of event storming is about, you know, putting sticky notes on the wall. In my case, the wall didn't really work well with the sticky notes. So that's why we went with the doors. Uh, so yellow ones are things like location decided, month decided, press pricing decided. When those three things are decided, we can say we have we are planning a workshop edition. So for example, uh, when I'm recording this, is October 2017. Next month, we have a session in November uh, in London. So once we knew that we want to go to London, and we knew we want to do it in November, that's something we can announce. And some, uh, that's, that's interesting, actually, many people consider, actually, they buy uh, tickets to the workshop, even though there is no strict date decided. So we didn't know exactly what is the venue, exactly which days we are going to do it. But some people decided, okay, I know enough, this is for me. So just deciding on those three things, uh, it's enough for opening the sales. So the whole business process is starting here. It's also opening the process for logistics to find the venue. And logistics is handled by other people uh, in, in our company. So we can actually you know, separate the ways in here. So those are interesting events. Location decided, month decided, pricing decided means that the workshop is actually planned. Uh, the blue parts here are what I called the, band, what I'm calling this bounded context, or you can call them also modules or are business areas. So, for example, this is logistics. So, some are some some of the notes here, which there are also not all of them here, are about uh, finding the venue, booking the catering, you know, finding the right place, agreeing on that, deciding, communicating with people. So, this is about logistics. And some other areas are, like, for example, this is sales, this is e-commerce, this is marketing, this is calendar, this is mailing, this is uh, ordering, and here uh, below, this is workshops. So. Actually, quite many areas, and this is usually what you will see in any kind of application, that you have more than one area, and probably in your code, you want to reflect that. The whole point of being even driven and model your business world with events is that you want to build this model. Like, this is, you can say, this is a model. This is a model, not an active record model. This is a model of our business, and this is a model that could be reflected in the software that we are going to write. So, if we map those events from the cards, which we believe they exist in our business process because they, they do exist, 
If we move them and have them in the code, then it's much easier for us to reflect the real business requirements in the code because there will be one-to-one -one mapping. This is solving really nicely the whole problem of you know, getting requirements from the customer and then mapping those requirements into code. And it's very rarely one-to-one -one mapping. It's not very difficult to find. If you go event-driven and if you communicate with business, which is surprisingly friendly for the business to think in terms of events, like location decided, this is very easy for business. Like I'm the business here. So it's easy for me to, to think about it. But also I've noticed many non-technical business people are, uh, it's easy for them to think in business. And then we have this one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, you can kind of even reflect requirements who using events. So blue cards, bounded context, yellow cards, uh, events, and the green cards are read models. I will show all of that in the code in a small example. The green cards are showing the places on the UI which you display some data. And in Rails, we don't really separate the parts which display the data and the parts which, for example, are using for the form, because it's usually the same, because you use active record and this can be you know, embedded on the form. This can be then also iterated over and displayed on the, on the list of things to display. So in this approach I'm showing today, it doesn't have to be this way, but in this approach, which I'm in this flavor of being even driven, I will show you how it is cool to have those read models separated. They are actually optimized to be the fastest possible. Uh, they usually are denormalized if it's needed, uh, and you have uh, a, a unit per a view. So that's re that's a really cool thing. And uh, if there's one thing to learn from this uh, session, this is about read models. So I'm going to show you some code now. I will show. I will start with the integration test to understand the main flow. This is super trivial. I will show you the race controller so that you can get a familiar place in the code where we start the flow. But then the other things happen. So I will introduce uh, some other layers, uh, which may look as not needed really, but that's the point of even driven that we change the architecture. We no longer think about you know, active record models or service objects, for example. Uh, this is a little bit different approach to the architecture. So I will tell you about aggregates, events, read models, and I will try to close the event-driven loop. What it means that the event is published, then someone reacts to it, and at the end, someone actually sees the data on the website. How, how does it work? So that's the part uh, in, the, in the coding session now.